Hello, Stephen Long here, and thank you for tuning in to another episode of the Gaston's Great Podcast. This week's episode is part one of a two-part recording in an effort to keep each episode a little shorter. Thanks again, and we hope you enjoy it. Hello, Gaston County. Welcome to episode number 134 of Gaston's Great, a podcast highlighting some of the great things happening in and around Gaston County. I'm your host, Stephen Long, and we're coming from you this week. We're going to call it the intergalactic headquarters of GSM Services. We simply believe in discussing more of the reasons, boy, reasons that Gaston's great. We are highlighting another great organization this week as we highlight Gaston together. We have Leslie Lee and Amia Massey with us today. Leslie is the executive director of the organization, and Amia is the chair of the board going on what are your 23rd year with the organization <laughs> that's the chair of the organization I mean yeah not quite second year second year <laughs> well lesson to me it's great to have you on and welcome to the podcast thank you thanks for having us yes yeah. thank you You're very welcome so one question before we get into the specifics of gas together one question we do like to ask is our listeners might be interested is uh, start with you Amia because you're closest sorry um, just tell us a little bit about yourself anything you'd like to share and then we'll we will make Leslie do the same thing. Okay. Um, uh, been in Gaston County for, um, oh gosh, probably going on about 15 years or so. I moved here from Charlotte when I began working at Gaston County. I started off as a social worker. Now I'm in human resources, still with the county. Um, I mean, you're the head cheese in human resources, aren't you? Maybe. I'm the human resource director, yes. Okay. <laughs> And um, have uh, my family's here. Uh, we moved here because our church is here. And so decided that we wanted to take up roots. My husband works in Charlotte. Um, so he wanted to make it convenient for me that I didn't have to drive back him. and forth. He's smart. Smart guy. He is. Very. And um, I've been a part of Gaston Together for now going on six years. And um, this is the second year for me being the chair. Well, very good. I appreciate you sharing that. Leslie, what about you? What can you tell us about yourself? So I'm originally from Boston, Massachusetts. We don't have, hold that against you. Don't. Yeah. And, and I have been uh, <laughs> uh, living in the South for 27 years now, almost 28 years. I live in York County, actually, but this is my second interaction working with a nonprofit in Gaston County. And so we've had a long history, about 15 years of being involved in things here in the county. Um, I enjoy the opportunity to be here and to see some of the changes that have happened since the first time I was working with a nonprofit. And um, I really just enjoy the people and the different opportunities that it offers. Well, we're very good. I appreciate that. So in full disclosure, um, I am a member of the board as well and have been literally for 22 years. I think it's eight <laughs> years. I'll leave it at that. That's a great thing. <laughs> Leslie, <laughs> Leslie can't get rid of me quick enough after next year, I'm afraid. Um, but you know, Gaston Together was on. Uh, back, gosh, way back in August of 2021. And so it would be interesting, you know, maybe after t today's episode, I might go back and listen to see how the changes that have occurred and, and how things are different. However, we love having organizations come back on it, especially so many things can happen in three years. And so the big question I, I like to talk, there may be some listeners out there who uh, don't really know much about Gassing Together. And they may have heard of some of the programs, some of the initiatives or seen some things that Gas Together has done or involved with, but they might not you know, make the connection. Um, so maybe um, start with you, Leslie. Can you just kind of, and, and this is real, most of these questions are going to be for both of you, but um, what can we do? What is the mission of, of Gas Together? Maybe even some history, just anything you'd like to share for our listeners that can um, kind of give, give them a, just a kind of a foundation for what you're Gaston together is. Sure. Um, I, I think you're right. I think we're sort of the best kept secret in Gaston yeah. County. Oftentimes people will say to me, oh, you're with Gaston together. And I'll say yes. And then I wait about 10 <laughs> seconds and they go, what is it that you do again? Yeah. So yeah. people know we exist, but they're not sure why. And yeah. we exist because we are the group that brings people together to talk about opportunities and challenges in Gaston County. We talk about the things that need to be looked at. We, talk, we celebrate the things that are happening that are going well. And we facilitate the conversations for those that need a little bit more attention. Okay. So um, as the board chair, would you add anything to that um, other than the corporate answer that Leslie gave? <laughs> 
we're connectors. We're connectors. Oh, yeah, that's a good way to put it. Yeah, we connect people and um, try to bring people together around the issues and the challenges that face our community. All right, so that's a big statement, right? So can we just jump in and and, and this is for both of you, but um, so you can just talk over each other. Um, what are some of the initiatives, programs? Um, I'm not. I like. I like just right getting right into the meat of an organization, and I'm not sure those are the the right words. You know, initiatives and programs. But uh, uh, there's so many. I mean, I'm familiar with it just because of of my involvement for the past few years. So um, that's where people are going to really maybe something might spark. Yeah, I'm, I'm familiar with that. Or so. So we really focus on how do we bring people together to talk about the different areas that need attention, that we are, as Amiya said, the connectors, the collaborators in the community. So what we are doing is really driven by what's happening in our community and where our needs are at mo- most of the time. We, an example would be something like the Control Substance Coalition. That was an initiative that came out of some of our wellness um, explorations and different needs that were happening in the community around substance use. But as we were looking at our mission and how we were at our, we are trying to connect with our community, it was appropriate for us to then find someone else who could be the leader of that hmm. organization because we had done the work of bringing the people together, and now we wanted to send it off work, continue to move forward. And that freed us up for some other areas that we're working in. We work in civic engagement, in leadership. We have a wonderful leadership program to help develop the leaders of our county, people who are really interested in how they can lead, what that means and what that looks like for them personally, as well as what it looks like for our community. We are involved in One Gast in 2040, which is the vision for our county, and that's a huge project that is ongoing. That's not something that was just a listening tour of deciding where we needed to go and creating a wonderful report. This is the actual action of how we're going to move our county forward and continuing to have those conversations about what that looks like. We are looking at community wellness. We have two programs that have had great impact so far in the community and are continuing to really, really blossom. One is our Just Call program. It teaches people what to do when there's an emergency. How do you call 911? What happens? How does the Good Samaritan law affect you? Things of that nature. And we're also doing Narcan training. We're teaching people how to save other people when the need arises. We also have something called the Togetherness Project. This is, a, this is a really important thing for us to be looking at. The Surgeon General came out and talked about how COVID and some of the other things that we've experienced in the last five years have isolated people. And the Togetherness Project is getting people reconnected to each other, teaching them how to create groups, how to get back in touch with people, how to be involved in their community in ways that brings really a feeling of happiness to them and addressing the loneliness issue. All right, so that was multiple things. Um, I mean, how about some of the other specific, I mean, things like, um, help me here, the um, the Clergy co- Coalition. Um, in, um, Guests oh, and Citizens and Clergy thank you. Coalition, Gosh. yes. You think I've been involved with the organization or not? <laughs> you whiz. So, I mean, so there's other, they, they almost feel like uh, their own entities and, you know, in, in some ways. I think that's one reason why they lose the connection maybe with, with Gaston together. But what are some other other things that, that like that that are, that are going on related to Gaston together in the community? So, you know, what, GC3? GC3, that's GC3. the... GC3. Um, I'm trying to think, is anything else that Leslie hasn't already mentioned? Uh, Something that that organization does that I think people will probably be familiar with are the... Um, Oh, the um, the MLK Awards. That's pro- That might be the most that in the um, covenant. The covenant. Yes. Those two things are probably the most well known or well seen uh, things that that occur. Right? Is that fa- is that a fair assessment? How did that? How did those two things come about? It is the uh, clergy uh, Gaston Clergy and Citizens Coalition really came about with the inception of Gaston Together. It was one of the first initiatives that happened. Right. It was designed to bring people together to have some of those hard conversations. And acknowledging the fact that um, clergy is a very important part of how people approach things here. And and your church affiliation or your worship affiliation 
is very important to how you approach a lot of the, the different areas that you're concentrating on. So that they came together. I, I think you touched on the two most important things that that group does. One is the MLK Unity Award that every year is given to someone who is uplifting the message that Dr. King brought to our community and to, to everyone about how we can work together. It's OK to have differences, but it's important that we work together. And the other is the covenant between clergy and law enforcement. And that has been signed three times now. And it is designed to have a unified message. When there's an issue in our community, the clergy and law enforcement come together, and they create a statement that they share about what is happening and how they're going to address it. And so it takes a lot of the confusion about how things are going to be ad addressed away. GC3 tends to have its most active membership when something is happening in the community. So it's one of those parts of our organization when it's not doing a lot, it's probably good because yeah. that means we're not addressing something that needs <laughs> that attention, but we still want it to be something that's available to people. How long did you how long has that been going on? It seems like I was in gas together when I was first started. So it's been twenty four, almost twenty five years that okay. that part has been. Okay. Well what about the covenant? Was the that, covenant that was 2016 or 2018? Yeah, because I was on the board. I had just come on the board. Okay. So 2018. 2018, okay. the first covenant was okay. signed, and we've now had three different signings of it. Uh, most recently, when we had a lot of change in the head of the different law enforcement sure. agencies. Sure. We're very, very excited that all of our law enforcement agencies have signed on to the covenant. And also, this, um, this past covenant, we also had the district attorney. Um, signed that covenant to be as the lead of these law enforcement agencies, but also many of them use it as a part of their um, their service in the community. Each officer that's hired is given a copy of that covenant and asked to sign it and put it into their personnel files in some of our communities. So we're really, they really are embracing the concept of what it is the covenant is doing. It's to help normalize and equalize the conversations when our issues arise. Yeah. So. Um, we all know some of the things that have occurred in our country in the last six or seven years, and I think that's kind of what stemmed some of this. But I did. There was an event. Uh, I remember correctly, at Tony's Ice Cream, actually, and I was on Gas and Go the board, and um, and I, I became aware of the communication going on between law enforcement and local clergy at that moment. And so, I, I'd like to think that that's um, enough forward thinking and enough. Just understanding, it, maybe bring, maybe that's a better way to put it, a, a, be, a better understanding and Im, immediate communication that occurs. Because you're right, you hope you um, don't ever have to ring the bell or whatever, you know, when, when those uh, uh, events, circumstances, whatever you want to call them, occur. But we, yeah, our county had something in place where very specific action occurred and took place, right? When something, um, unusual let's just put it that way it, it can occur so um, I had I had and two we're talking about I had forgotten about uh, about that and um, and I was I was the chair of the board uh, myself so I, I was able to sit in on some of these meetings with GC3 and um, attend some of the signings of the covenant and the MLK award so it's been um, I don't know it just opens your eyes to the things that, you know, that the, the work that's really being done to keep us, bring us together, maybe, um, you know, no pun intended there, <laughs> you know. Um, so this is for both of you because you've both been, you know, obviously um, involved. Well, maybe uh, let me back up and ask a different question. Um, and sorry, this probably wasn't something that we shared. What has changed in the last three or years or so with Gaston Together? Because, you know, we were, you know, it was 2021, still in the middle of, I don't like to say that word anymore. That was a strange time. Um, so what kind of has anything big changed in the last three years um, since we last talked to, had Gaston together on something besides, you know, Amia being in charge and just rolling it? I'll start. The and then, okay. <laughs> so, yes, we've had a change in leadership. Right. And that was a major change for us um, because our former leader had been with the organization for a long time and yeah. um, had done a, a very good job of, 
you know, really, you know, helping to set the foundation for the organization. And um, now we have a new leader who's coming in and getting acclimated to the area, to the board. Um, she's still here. So we're grateful for that. Um, but with this change came um, some changes in our strategic direction. Okay. And so we have had to really relook at and rethink about our focus. Um, we've talked about branding and we've talked mm -hmm. it just as she stated, people say gassing together and you pause and it's like, what do you all do? Um, so we're grateful for Leslie's leadership and how she is um, helping to make us more visible. Um, ensure that uh, people do know what we do as far as our mission. And um, she has gotten a part of, she's become a part of many community organizations and she's been um, involved in, you know, some of the major discussions, which helps us with um, achieving our mission. We're grateful for her passion. She is truly committed um, and uh, we run lean at times and, and we know that. And so having the staff we have, being able to accomplish what we can accomplish um, has just been tremendous. And um, we're grateful for her heart um, and the dedication that she puts in uh, to ensure that we're able to accomplish our, our mission daily. Would you add anything to that or? I thank you. Thank you for those kind words. And I agree. Um, I, and I agree with and, Amia. And I appreciate that. I, I love what I do with Gaston Together. I love the opportunities that it offers us as a community for what we can do and how we can look at things. Um, I, we have been really focusing on looking at our mission and what our mission brings to our community and how we can use that to serve. Um, and I think we're really our strategic planning is really making a difference in how we are how we are approaching that. We have rebranded with a new logo that really shows everyone um, that we are want to be the compass. We want to be the center of what is happening, and making sure that we are looking at all of the areas, not just the easy conversations and not just the things that people want to to do that are are what I like call low-hanging fruit. We want to do the hard conversations. We want to go in and have those conversations that you might have to go back two, three, four times to really be able to hear what someone is saying and make sure that we're addressing and putting our energies into where the needs are in our community. All right, so that leads into a, a great um, couple of questions. So something I like to ask, and these, these questions are very similar, but and this is for both of you. Maybe start with you, um, Leslie, since you're, your time here with Gas Together hasn't been um, as long as the organization's been around, but can you think of an example, whether it, it could be with any of the initiatives and, and things that we're involved with, excuse me, Gas Together's involved with, say we, don't I? Um, does something stand out as a, an example? Like you said, wow, that's the reason we're here. An anecdotal story or a, a family that was impacted or something you said, wow, that's that shows... That that's accomplishing the helping us accomplish the mission, or just some example of that. Is that a fair question? Or? It's a fair question, and I think there's two answers to it. The first okay. is what stands out to me is our civic engagement leadership program. Okay. Uh, that is an absolutely amazing, transformative experience for people who go through it. It's an eight month long experience. They, we meet once a month for a day long process, and who you are as you enter the program and who you are as you leave the program, no matter how much you interact with it. It's two different things, and you see this in them. But the other part of that that really excites me is this December we will have had 115 people go through that right. program. That's 115 people who are bringing their leadership in different levels of service to our community. But at last check, 80% of the people who've gone through that program are still serving in some way in this community, whether it's professionally, whether it's involved with the board, whether it's a service through their church or their community, their schools. We have brought leadership to a new level here with that program, and that really excites me. Well, I have to do a quick shout-out to Nicole Burgess here, who's one of our uh, co-workers, and she went through the program and uh, I do think, I, actually, I don't think, I know that it really had a, a huge positive impact on her. Yeah. And she is involved with Rotary. She's on the United Way board now. And so, yeah, that has, I think, uh, just expanded her view uh, of the world. Um, aren't, aren't you a graduate of I CEL am. Yes. as well? I am a graduate. And it, it truly was a transformational experience for me, um, not just professionally, because 
after CEL, I was blessed to get a promotion um, <laughs> that I wasn't expecting. However, um, it really helped me to, I guess, tune in more to the community. Um, I was present, but I wasn't present. And um, <laughs> that I said that in, in class one day, you know, being visible, being aware of what's going on and really asking myself, Amia, how can you serve and how can you contribute um, to the community that, to the community that you're living in. Um, how can you make a difference? And I've grown, I mean, my father's a minister. Uh, my mom's an educator. And so our lives have been about serving, yet I wasn't as involved as I needed to be. And so um, that helped me to really put some things in perspective. And that I, uh, Gaston Together was the first board that I joined after um, going through CEL. And then I've had the uh, privilege of being um, or the honor of being on other boards. Right. And so. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Once the community gets you, it pulls you That's in. It, like it does. Yeah. It does. That's good, though. So what um, it's a similar question. You may and this may be the same answer, but. Uh, both your times involved with Gas Together, something that jumps out that you're most proud of accomplishing? I mean, is it CEL? Is it well, is something else specific? I'll say, and, and we're, you know, work, we work with the school system um, mm -hmm. in the past, and we're looking forward to working with them um, in some different areas going forward. The first year I was on the board, I was part of the proudest kid of Gaston County. Okay. I was yeah. part of that committee. And I, you know, reading those stories, the third grade stories, and, you know, just kind of seeing what their thought was about the community. The night that we had um, the dinner, and we had the kids all, you know, we have the kids to all come in. That's an essay contest. That essay yes. contest, yes, right. thank you. It's essay contest that they write about. And so we have winners um, from each school. And, of course, we announce um, at our awards night. And there was a family that came in. And you could tell they were, you know, a little hesitant, um, not really sure what to expect, and sat down at the table. And just to see the pride, you know, in their eyes when their, you know, child's name was called. They didn't win, but, you know, stood up and, um, you know, and, and the mom was like, I'm just so proud of you. <laughs> and I was thinking, oh, this is wonderful that, you know, we 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 took part in giving them this memory, something that they would always have. I don't know what kind of student, you know, the, the child was, but the fact that, you know, they're able to come together in this nice place at the country club yeah. and, you know, have dinner and be recognized. And um, I think that's important. That stood out to me. It still stands out. And I'm sure each year we have a similar experience where you have a family or you have families who are appreciative of the recognition, um, you know, that their children receive. And not all kids get that kind of recognition. Sure. Not all employees, you know, get that. With working where I work, you know, we, you know, we need to, we try to recognize and value what people do. So that stands out to me. Um, that was a proud moment for me with the organization that, you know, we had something where we could offer, you know, that kind mm -hmm. of value and recognition to a family and allow children to, to be honored for the work they do. Yeah, I remember the first time I went to the, say, a, a country club to like a community event. I mean, I, I was a little intimidated. I mean, I was probably in my 30s. I was like, what is going on here? I don't belong here. So it's, it is. It can be an intimidating thing, especially if you're not sure what you're getting into. That's it's right. First time, first time event. Leslie, would you answer that any differently or is that... I, I know I love I love that part yeah, of what we do and how we do it and but but I also see how we are looking now at having partnerships with other organizations and not just working in our own silo. We often go out into our community and talk about things are in silos and we need to make sure that we're working together. So now we are looking at partnerships with different groups of ways that we can affect things. Vision is one of, uh, one guest in 2040 is the perfect example. This is the first time that the vision has been done in partnership with the county. Before, Gaston Together worked on the vision as a solo organization and did a wonderful job. But we were able to expand the opportunities within the vision so much further because we had the partnership of the county. And we were able to, to really look at many different areas that we weren't able to look at before. And I think it's really given us a, a comprehensive roadmap of where we, we all, not just organizationally, but community-wise, want to move our community forward. Thanks so much for listening to today's episode, which was part one of a two-part recording. Please tune back in next week to hear the second part. Thanks again, and please continue to spread the word about the Gaston's Great Podcast.